part of our Juneteenth coverage, we have a history-making pilot with us. That's right. Lieutenant General Richard Clark has been superintendent of the U.S. Air Force Academy for nearly two years. He is the first black general appointed to that prestigious post. General Clark is also a highly decorated command pilot with more than 400 hours of combat experience. A few years ago, he commanded the 8th Air Force, um, where the Tuskegee Airmen served during World War II. General, how are you doing? Good morning. I'm great, Good morning. Nate. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for joining us. Yeah. Um, Thank now, you for having me. As we noted, you are the first black superintendent of the Air Force Academy. Um, what has it been like? Because you've been, you've been at this position for about two years, right? That's correct. Yeah, it's been interesting. It's been great, though. I love being back at my alma mater. Mm -hmm. uh, but COVID was tough. Uh, we fought through that. Imagine being at a service academy during a global pandemic, but it's really an honor to be there. So, mm -hmm. uh, And, and, and your Air Force chief of staff and the vice superintendent are also black. That's uh, true. What is it like for you and the cadets to see that representation in positions of power and influence? Well, I, I think it's, it's a representation, really, of the diversity in our armed forces, mm. our Air Force. And uh, we constantly work on that. We think it's important. It, uh, it's a strategic imperative for us because if we're going to uh, have a, an armed forces, we can't just build that armed forces from 30 percent of our population. Right. We need to be represented by the entire population. If we're going to defend America, we need to look like America. Is that a matter of, of principle and philosophy or a matter of actual effectiveness in combat? Uh, it's a strategic imperative. We, w if we're going to be effective, we need the power of our population. And diversity is an inherently American strength. And in the military, we're taught to capitalize on our strengths. So that's one that we have, and uh, we work hard to capitalize on it. I look forward to the day where we don't have to have uh, the first first black sure. anything. I look forward to that day. We're certainly not there yet. That's why we wanted to celebrate you on this Juneteenth. Do you, did you feel or do you feel stress or pressure on yourself because you are a first in that position? Um, I, I think at times, um, I, the pressure for me, though, is to perform. I mean, I, I have a job to do, and I need to do it well. But there's so many people that have made this opportunity possible for me. Mm -hmm. I don't want to let them down. Mm -hmm. uh, people like the Tuskegee Airmen, like you mentioned, Nate. Um, I, I remember this uh, one event uh, I was at. It was a Tuskegee Airmen convention. And I had showed up, and our chief of staff, Mark Welsh, mm -hmm. at the time, General Mark Welsh, uh, he met me there. He told me that uh, I was going to be promoted to three-star, but to keep it quiet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I spent that, uh, that cocktail hour time just talking to these original Tuskegee Airmen. Didn't yeah. tell them I was going to be promoted, right. but yeah. I was just on cloud nine. But then when General Welsh, he was the keynote speaker, it was when I was the commander of 8th Air Force, which is all of our bomber forces. Yeah. Um, he gave this great speech about the Tuskegee Airmen. And then he goes, where's Rich Clark? Are you sitting in the audience? Where are you, Rich? And he asked me to come up. And I, I had no idea what he was going to do. And he brought me up and he, and he looked out to these original Tuskegee Airmen. He goes, would you have ever imagined when you were flying missions in World War II that one day the commander of the bombers that you're escorting would be a black man. Yes, and, wow. and those Tuskegee Airmen, it, it was so humbling, they started to stand up and clap. And clap, wow. yeah. And I realized it wasn't about me. Yeah. It was about one person who was a part of their legacy. And I, right. it, it put some, uh, honestly, some pressure on me to, to pay it forward. But we're clapping for you today. I, and clearly, you take the job very seriously. I was reading that when you first got it, COVID, when COVID hit, you spent 28 days... <laughs> General, sir, in the I dorms did. with the cadets. I did. Sleeping on the cots. Yeah. It's been 28 days. Why did you do that? They were going through some tough times. Uh -huh. and, and I wanted them to know that their, their whole staff, all of our uh, faculty, our instructors, our coaches that were all with them, and, and I felt like I was probably the best representative of our staff and uh, that, that we're in this together. You have four now, priorities for them? For I do. Uh, well, first, to develop leaders of character. And there we talk go. about that all the time. That is most important in any, any mm -hmm. realm of life. Uh, was to defeat COVID-19. I think we're in a good place there. Yeah. I, hope, I hope we I are. I hope so. Um, the next one is to prepare them for future conflict. Yeah. Not, not for next year, not for two years from now, but for five or 15 years so that they're ready for whatever our country might face. 
And then lastly, to really cultivate a culture of dignity and respect, mm -hmm. which is crucial in our armed forces. Now, um, Air Force Academy also trains cadets for Space Force. We do. Now, given uh, <laughs> Talking about the future, your yeah. hours, hours of experience and your knowledge in Space Force, I, I have to ask, because I feel like a lot of people at home are wondering, what's with all this talk about UFOs? Are they real? Yes. Is, does I alien life form this. exist? I, this. I, mean, you, I, I can't you leave you. You didn't see that question. I can't let you leave the set without asking that question. <laughs> A lot of I Americans told you want to know. Though, if I told you, I, I'd have. <laughs> and I, oh, oh man. <laughs> Well, listen, oh, okay. I might have to sacrifice myself yeah, yeah. for the people. They want to know. Well, I wish I knew. I'll be honest. You, you, you went outside my, my space there. Cause, did you uh, go see Top Gun? Did you like it? Oh, I did. Did you like it? Was I it thought believable it was a great to you? Movie. How I, realistic is it? Well, I, I thought it was realistic enough for me to enjoy that movie. Yeah. I, really? I thought it was a great movie. Hey, that's great. Really yeah, because we love it. We love it. Talk about I great. It's, it Ju it's June 20th today. I've heard from reliable sources, this is a really good day for you. Why? Oh, it's a big day. I got to give a shout out to my anniversary. Oh. My wife, Amy, and I have been married yeah, 24 Amy. years. That's awesome. So uh, any chance I get to make some points with her? No doubt. I'm taking it. Yeah, so, yeah, that's great. Uh, Con happy anniversary. Congratulations, Congratulations to you and Amy. Do you have a brother? Just I asking do. for a friend. I, I, I do. <laughs> he, he's taken, though. Oh, oh man. Uh, man. I have a son, though, but he's only 20. But oh, no, thank you. No, thank you. What? No, no, no. Come on, Stella, you won't get your group back? No, 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 no. Just saying. A absolutely not. All right. All right. Just, Amy, I would never. I would never. Congratulations. Uh, thank We're you very so happy much. for you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, General Clark, thank you very much for being here. Appreciate it. Thank you.